Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Barron. In this video, I'm going to talk about hypotheses. In particular, the null hypothesis and the research hypothesis. Knowing what these are and how we can use them is very important for understanding how we can use data and how we can use statistics to manage our people within an organization. A hypothesis is simply an educated guess about what we think might happen in a research project. And this educated guess about what we think might happen helps us by clarifying the overall research question that we have. A research question is simply a question that focuses us on what we're trying to learn in our study, and the hypothesis takes it a step further by further clarifying that overall research question. The great thing about a hypothesis, at least one that's well written, is that it gives us a framework for actual testing. It tells us what we want to look at in our data by specifying a relationship between variables. So here are a few examples of hypotheses. You'll see these again later in this video as examples of research hypotheses. For example, employees' job satisfaction is positively related to their commitment to the organization. Example two, leaders who communicate with respect have higher quality relationships with their employees. And example three, people who work in high stress organizations are more likely to think about quitting than those who work in low stress organizations. These are three examples of hypotheses, and these in particular are research hypotheses. But before we talk about research hypotheses, it's important to talk about the null hypothesis. Oftentimes this is written as H with a subscript zero. Sometimes you'll see it written as H subscript N, but I'm having it as H subscript zero, the null hypothesis. So there are two important types of hypotheses, the first being the null hypothesis and the second being the research hypothesis. So let's assume that we select a sample from a population to study. Again, a sample is a representative subset of a larger group. I do research on people, so oftentimes this refers to people for me. We then have to state the null hypothesis. And these are simply statements of equality or of unrelatedness. It's saying that there's nothing really going on with the variables in our study. And so building upon the examples that I gave previously, the null hypothesis version of those would be that, for example, employees' job satisfaction is unrelated to their commitment to the organization. Example number two of a null hypothesis created from that previous research hypothesis, leaders who communicate with respect have relationships with their employees that are of the same quality as those who communicate with disrespect. People who work in high-stress organizations are equally likely to think about quitting than those who work in low-stress organizations. And so what you see across these three examples is that they are statements of equality or unrelatedness. It's saying that there's nothing going on here. That is the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis, first of all, helps us by giving us a starting point for our study. Furthermore, the null hypothesis provides a comparison point to help us see if what we find in a study is different from the null result. And then we can test it to see if those differences are due to chance or not. So the idea of a null hypothesis and a research hypothesis and hypothesis testing relates closely to the idea of statistical significance, and that's something that I cover in another video. But this is an important step to understand before you get to that step. Interestingly, most null hypotheses are implied. They're not explicitly stated in research. So that brings us to the research hypothesis, oftentimes written as H subscript 1 or H subscript A, the A being something that stands for alternate, 
and that's because it's an alternative to the null hypothesis. And this is something that usually is explicitly stated in research, and it's a clear statement that describes an expected relationship between variables. One type of research hypothesis is the non-directional research hypothesis. This is one that doesn't specify whether or not one variable is greater than or less than another variable. It just says that they're not equal, that they're just different. In contrast, the directional research hypothesis states a direction, for example, greater than or less than. So let's revisit those research hypotheses that I showed you earlier in the video. The first one, employees' job satisfaction is positively related to their commitment to the organization. This is clearly a directional research hypothesis because it's stating a direction. It's saying that we think that as employees' job satisfaction goes up, that their commitment to the organization in general goes up too. And as their job satisfaction goes down, their commitment to the organization is going down. So this is a positive relationship that we are hypothesizing and this is a directional research hypothesis. Similarly, the second hypothesis, leaders who communicate with respect have higher quality relationships with their employees. That's another directional research hypothesis. And finally, people who work in high stress organizations are more likely to think about quitting than those who work in low stress organizations. That's another directional research hypothesis. Now if we were going to make that a non-directional research hypothesis, that last one, it would simply be that people who work in high stress organizations have a different level of thinking about quitting than those who work in low stress organizations. It wouldn't say that they're more likely or less likely, it would just say that it's different. Uh, people think about quitting differently uh, depending on whether or not they work in a high stress or low stress organization. That would be an example of a non-directional research hypothesis. Now the concept of directional and non-directional research hypotheses, that's important because it helps us understand something about statistical significance testing. All I want you to remember for right now is that there's something about directional and one-tailed tests that you should remember. Uh, and you can keep this little image in mind, and I'll explain this in another video related to statistical significance testing. But remember our normal distribution that looks something like this. It's not a perfect one because it's drawn with my finger. However, remember these parts of the uh, distribution are referred to as the tails. So directional research hypotheses, we can also refer to those or think of those as one-tailed tests. Similarly, when you think about non-directional research hypotheses, you can think about two-tailed tests. So I'll try again to draw a normal distribution. We'll see if this one's any better than the other one. It's maybe a little bit better. Okay, so remember, these are what we call the tails, and non-directional research hypotheses refer to two tails, whereas directional refer just to one. So just remember that and think about the normal distribution and what tails are. And I think that'll help you when you start learning about statistical significance testing. So what are some properties of good hypotheses? Well, good hypotheses are clear, declarative, and brief. They're also statements that tell us about expected relationships between variables. And remember, a variable is simply anything that can vary. And a good research hypothesis tells us about expected relationships between variables. Good hypotheses also reflect the theory and the past research that's been done on the topic. And finally, good hypotheses are testable. Good hypotheses that are clear, they're declarative, they're brief, and tell us about an expected relationship between variables based upon good theory and past research on the topic, they're ones that tell us something about how we can test it, and then we can look to our data 
and do things with statistics in order to figure out whether or not we can accept or reject the null hypothesis. That's something I'll talk about again in another video on statistical significance testing. All right, my friends. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you learned a little something about hypotheses, in particular the null and research hypotheses. To learn more about this type of topic and other related topics, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Ben Barron, and visit my website, www.benbarron.com. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day.